If you're a sock knitter, you might be uncertain about when to start the toe of a cuff down sock. Your row gauge might be different from the pattern's row gauge, or maybe you want to modify the toe for a better fit, or even swap out the specified toe for a completely different toe. In this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll explain how to plan for the exact starting point of your cuff down sock toe. The foot of a sock has three basic parts. It has the heel, it has the main body of the foot, and it has the toe. So in order to know when you need to start the toe decreases, you need to know two things. One, you need to know what the total foot length is going to be for your sock, and then you need to know how long the toe is going to be. The first part of that equation is the total length of the sock. Now I knit my socks to the actual length of the recipient's foot. And I do that for two reasons. One, I'm knitting to a firmer gauge than the ball band recommends for the sock that I'm using. And that's so that the sock will have durability and also so that it will resist stretching out. It will still be stretchy, it will still stretch to fit the sock, but it will resist stretching out. The second thing I do is that I knit the sock circumference so that it is with 10% negative ease. That means it's going to be 10% smaller than the recipient's ball of foot circumference. So the fact that I'm knitting to a firm gauge which resists stretching out and I'm knitting the sock smaller, which means that the sock has to stretch to fit the circumference of the foot, that's going to automatically cause the length of the sock to pull in a little bit. When I knit to the exact length of the recipient's foot, the sock will have to stretch a little bit in the length to get a really good fit. So this is the sock that I just showed you on my foot. You can see that it fits my foot really well. The next thing I need to do is to calculate how long that toe is going to be based on the instructions that I have for my sock toe. This sock has a toe that was knit with what's called the wedge toe. It's probably the most common sock toe that is used in socks today. There are four decreases in a decrease round. There's two at each side, and then you follow every decrease round with a plain round until you work the final decrease round with no plain round after that, and then you graft the toe shut. In order to know how long this toe is going to be, we need to know how many rounds we are going to work in total in order to complete this entire toe. And then we can use the row gauge to determine what the actual length of that is. So you can figure out the number of rounds in the toe visually by mapping it out, by saying you're starting with, let's say you had started with 64 stitches and every time you decrease, you're gonna lose four stitches and then you're going to work a plain round and then a decrease round, plain round, etc. And you can see what that would look like until you get down to the final number of stitches that you need, which is 20. So you could add all of those up. You could see that there are 11 decrease rounds and for the first 10 decrease rounds, you worked a plain round. So you would know that you had 11 decrease rounds plus 10 plain rounds, and that would be 21. You could do it that way, or you could do it as a calculation. You could say, I'm starting with 64 stitches and I'm ending with 20 stitches. That means I'm going to lose 44 stitches altogether in the process of knitting the toe. And every time we are working a decrease round, we're losing four stitches. So you divide the, the total number of stitches that you're decreasing by the number of decreases in each decrease round. So that would tell you that that was 11 decrease rounds. And because we know that we are not working a plain round after the last decrease round, we know that there are 10 plain rounds. Um, so that gives us 21 total rounds. And again, you can do this by calculating or you can do it just by laying it out visually. Now you know how many total rounds you have. So in order to determine the length, you need to divide the number of rounds by your row gauge. Let's say that you have 11 rounds per inch. So then you would divide 21 rounds by 11 rounds 
per inch. And in this case, you're going to have just under two inches. It's going to be 1.9 inches. It's, it's about two inches. If you want your sock to be, say, 9.5 inches in length, and your sock is going to be about two inches, just under two inches, then you are going to start your toe when the sock foot is seven and a half inches in length. The second approach that you can use for when to start a sock toe would be based on the actual shape of the sock recipient's foot. So I have two friends here who have identical measurements in terms of the ball of their feet. So if I were knitting socks for them, and I have, I would have the same number of stitches in the socks. And if I use the instructions for the toe that I was just talking about and it was two inches long, it would be too short for Helen and it would be too long for Rosemary. Rosemary really needs a sock toe that's maybe an inch and a half to an inch and three quarters in length where Helen needs one that's more like two and a half inches in length because her toe, her foot just gets starts getting narrower much sooner and there's a much more gradual narrowing of her foot where my friend Rosemary uh, starts out getting narrower and then her final three uh, toes are all the same length and so it needs to get dramatically smaller all at one time. So I, I might look at their feet and say well I want to knit that toe but I want to knit it so that it's longer for Helen and shorter for Rosemary. So in this situation, I would start with the actual length of the toe that I want. Let's say I want a, a toe that is 2.5 inches in length. And again, let's say I'm working at 11 rounds per inch. What I would need for Helen's sock is a toe that was 27 or 28 rounds long. So originally, remember this particular toe, we calculated out it was 21 rounds. So that the original toe was 21 rounds. Uh, I need to add six or seven rounds in order to make it long enough for Helen. Let's just say we want to add six uh, to get 27 rounds. So what I would do for Helen, I would add extra plain rounds and I would add them at the beginning to increase the length uh, of the toe at the base. So I would add six. So I'd add an extra one here and I would do this. Uh, until I had I used up all of the extra ones. So this will tell me that after I work the first decrease round, I'm going to work two plain rounds after, and then I'm going to uh, work two plain rounds after each of these initial decrease rounds until I get to here. When I have 36 stitches, then I will just shift to having one plain round after each of the decrease rounds. And that will give me the length of the toe that I need. And I, again, I will start the toe when I'm two and a half inches shorter than I, what I want for the, for the full length of the sock. So for Rosemary, I'm a, I want to make a sock toe that's only 16 or 17 rounds long. And so I need to subtract four or five rounds. Let's subtract four rounds. So I want to get rid of four plain rounds. And so in this case, when I want to shorten the toe, I'm going to start at this end. I want to eliminate uh, those four plain rounds. I would start her sock toe when the when the sock length is one and a half inches shorter than what I actually want. If you like the idea of modifying elements of your socks in order to customize the fit, you might be interested in my August Sock Knit Along tutorial, which explains how to fully measure your foot, how to determine where you might have fit issues when using standard sock formulas, and then how to modify various heels and toes to get a perfect fit. If you're a toe-up knitter wondering how to determine when to start the heel of a toe-up sock, this video over here might be of interest to you. In addition, I have an entire playlist of sock technique videos to explore. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.